Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're gonna be working on this interesting tech world using full learning integration, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the question. The question is evaluate this integral from zero to one, cosine of ln x times x squared minus one over ln x dx. For this integral, we'll be using free Lenny integral. That is about integral from 0 to infinity, f of ax minus f of bx over x dx. This is the same as negative f of 0 times ln of a over b. But then again, in order for us to use this free Lenny integral, we'll be working on lower bound and the upper bound, and also for the integrand too. So I'll be starting off with this Euler's formula that we already know that e to the power of i theta. This is the same as cosine theta plus i times sine theta. And for the complex number z, z to the power of i is then going to be e to the power of ln z to the power of the i. This is the same as e to the power of i times ln z. But then again, your integrand is based on the variable x, right? So x to the power of i. We can represent this as e to the power of i times ln of the x. This has to be just the same as now then, cosine of ln x plus i times sine of ln x. So we can say this cosine of the ln x, this real part, and this part is imaginary. So based on this, we can use how cosine of the ln of x, this is a real part of x to the power of i. So we can rewrite this integral. I'll be calling this integral as just the i. Okay, then your integral i is the same as then real part of integral from 0 to 1. Then that of x to the power of i times x squared minus 1 over ln x dx. Okay, then let's multiply this x to the power of i to those two terms on your numerator. Then your integral should be the same as so the real part of integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of now 2 plus i minus x to the power of i that over ln of x. Then we have dx. Since we know that x is e to the power of ln x, so we can rewrite this integral as real parts of integral from 0 to 1 of now e to the power of parenthesis 2 plus i times ln x minus e to the power of i times ln x, then that over still ln x. And then dx is the same as d of e to the power of ln x. And from this, I'll substitute x as now e to the power of x. Of course, the lower bound and the upper bound should change. But for now, let's first talk about this has to be the same as real part of integral. OK, I'll be talking about the lower bound and the upper bound. But then again, your integral, OK. Your denominator should be just the x. And then your numerator has to be e to the power of now 2 plus i times x minus e to the power of just the i x. And then getting a derivative of e to the power of x, that is the same as e to the power of x, and then we have dx. Let's talk about the lower bound and the upper bound. So we are substituting x to e to the power of x, right? The graph of e to the power of x is looking just like this y intercept is equal to 1. So the lower bound of the x was equal to 0. For this e to the power of x to be going to 0, right? Then your x should be going to negative infinity. So the lower bound has to be negative infinity. Then using the same logic, the upper bound of the x was equal to 1. For e to the power of x to go to 1, then your x should go to 0. So the upper bound has to be now 0. What I'm going to do is to substitute x as negative x. And this negative infinity turns into positive infinity. But the lower bound is infinity. We can switch lower bound and the upper bound by multiplying negative sign to the integral. So what we'll be having is the same as then, but still the real parts of integral from 0 to infinity of switching this. e to the power of negative ix minus e to the power of negative of 2 plus ix. Okay. That over the x, and then we have e to the power of negative x and dx. Let's multiply this e to the power of negative x to those two terms on your numerator. Then your integral should be looking like the real part of integral from 0 to infinity. And then we have 
e to the power of negative of i plus 1 x minus e to the power of negative of 3 plus i x. Then that over the x. Then we have the x. Then from this, let me call your f of x as e to the power of negative x. Then we can use this free line integral by calling this i plus 1 as the a and then 3 plus i as the b. Then at the same time, negative of f of 0. This is equal to just a negative 1. So what we should have is now negative of the real part of ln of now i plus 1 over 3 plus i. Okay. This has to be the same as applying this negative sign, the real part of ln of 3 plus i minus real part of ln of i plus 1. Real parts has to be the modulus if we represent your complex logarithm. So that's why the real parts of ln of 3 plus i. Okay, so that, this part is just the same as square root of 3 square plus just the 1 square, which is equal to square root of 10. Okay, so that is why ln of now square root of the 10 has to be the real parts of 3 plus i. Same thing for this real parts of ln of i plus 1. Modulus has to be the same as square root of 1 square plus 1 square, which is square root of 2. So that's why the real parts of ln of i plus 1. This has to be the same as ln of square root of 2. Okay, so you're now working on then ln of square root of 10 minus ln of square root of 2. This is the same as ln of square root of 5. So that is why ln of square root of 5 should be the answer for this question. Okay, so pretty interesting integral using Frillian integration. How exciting.